ask me, what is it that we're looking for? Mm. Well, we're looking for something that as far as we know, nature can't produce. So we've heard about looking for signatures of habitable worlds. We've talked a little bit about looking for biosignatures on those worlds. What we're doing in SETI, both in the radio here, which is what I work on, and also in the optical part of the spectrum, we're looking for techno signatures. We're looking for something that is engineered. So um, let's, let's show the next slide. This is a radio picture of um, the most distant object that we've ever manufactured. And this is a signal from that object. It's the Voyager 1 spacecraft. It's 106 times as far away from us as the sun is. It's out at the edge of the solar system. It's about to go into the interstellar medium. And I'm talking here so that you can look at this diagram and frequency is displayed horizontally and time is displayed vertically. And um, do you see it yet? How about there, right? And in fact, it's no problem at all for our signal detection algorithms, our computers, to find these kinds of patterns. We're looking for things that show up at a very small range of frequencies. Nature produces signals that cover a lot of the spectrum. So here in the radio, we're looking for frequency compression. In the optical, when we look for signals, we look for time compression. We look for bright flashes that last a billionth of a second or less. Um, that might be somebody's laser that's being focused by a big telescope and sent in our direction. Or it might be some new astrophysics that we don't know about yet. So these are the two ways we're looking today. Um, we think that's consistent with what we know about the universe and the electromagnetic spectrum. But we could be wrong. We might be looking for the wrong thing. Um, uh, any technology out there is going to be older than us, or they're undetectable. We've had technology for maybe 100 years that could be appropriate to interstellar communication. Our galaxy's 10 billion years old. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if there are any other technologies out there, but we can be fairly confident in saying that we are the youngest. Uh, any other technology that's there and detectable is going to be older. So they might be doing something totally different. They might be using zeta rays. I don't know what a zeta ray is, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's some physics yet to be understood and some technologies yet to be discovered and invented, and maybe zeta rays is one of those things. So what do you do? Uh, you do what you can. You use the tools that you have at hand. I mean, Columbus didn't wait for a 747 to get across the ocean. And so you just try and stick around long enough to get smart enough to invent these technologies, and then you start using those in the search, as well as the radio and the optical. I mean, it may be that some advanced technology has an institute of ancient instruments that they keep just for the purpose of trying to attract the attention of the emerging civilizations such as we are. So that's what we're doing. And the, the fun thing, Dave talked about what a great time to be alive. Um, I got hooked on SETI in the 70s when I realized that we, as a species, have been asking this are we alone question for millennia. And what did we do? We asked the priests or the philosophers or whoever we thought was wise, and we asked them, what should we believe? But actually, in the middle of the 20th century, we got some new tools, radio telescopes. And so I got hooked on SETI when I realized that I was in the first generation of people who could try and do an experiment to answer this old question, rather than asking, what should we believe? Mm 